So the reality for most of us studying computer science is that we're not genius influencers studying at Harvard. The biggest influence on your degree is where you study. Some countries have a three, four, or even five year degree. In your first year, you'll have intro to computer science, which is where you learn programming fundamentals. This is normally taught in Python or Java, but sometimes even in C or Lisp. This class is more of a weeder. To get rid of the people that chose their degree off TikTok, you'll learn a lot of basic programming skills, like variables, loops, and functions, and do common coding problems. Depending on where you study, you're gonna have to keep your student loan financed MacBook in your backpack, because you may have to write your programming assignments on pen and paper, showing how awesome our current education system is. Another class is intro to programming paradigms, like functional or object-oriented, which are just outdated styles of programming, because real production-level code is Spaghetti React. And that's all the coding for your first year, because the rest of it is filled with math classes and unrelated mandatory science or engineering electives. That's because becoming a software engineer from a CS degree is kind of like becoming a chef from a chemistry degree. If you've made it this far into your degree without switching to a business major or starting an OnlyFans account, your second year will be an intro to other CS topics, like intro to computer systems, which is about how computers work from the software to the hardware level, or introduction to computational logic, or more famously, algorithms algorithms and data structures, which is a class about drawing circles and lines, playing Where's Waldo with big O complexity, and maybe writing a little bit of code. At this point in your college career, you can forget about things like sleep, partying, friends, or mental and physical health, and get used to listening to the soothing voice of Abdul Bari while chugging Red Bull and eating Mee Goreng. The math also gets harder. Depending on your specialization, you'll have to do discrete math, statistics, calculus and algebra, and they'll definitely come in handy at your day job while you're spending 40 to 60 hours on your university degree, and potentially working a part-time job. You're also going to need to build projects with technology employers actually use, as well as grinding leak code problems to actually get the job, only for your inbox to be filled with these. Now, if you've made it this far to your degree without getting a therapist, you'll notice the classes start getting emptier, and the kid with the Arch Linux ThinkPad is officially working at Google. You'll also start forgetting your fundamentals from the lack of sleep, and your only social interaction being with this guy. Now, while you're grinding your unpaid internship, and failing the online hacker rank assessments from no-name companies, your computer science classes start throwing throwing you into the deeper end of the swimming pool. You'll now do more big boy coding, like creating compilers for your own programming language. Introduction to cryptography, which is just more math disguised as programming. You might also be building a graphics engine, and learning all this makes using C Sharp at your real job so much more easy. While juggling deep computing theory, you'll have to stay on top of your electives as well, which can be anything from downright useless to just painful, depending on what you choose to study. In your final year, you'll be doing more hands-on work, like building a project for an actual company on behalf of the university. These are normally called capstone projects. And if you haven't had an internship so far, this will give you the greatest experience for real-life software engineering, like completely useless teammates that disappear for the year, or working unpaid overtime for supervisors that don't care, and delivering a half-baked, barely-working product. You can also go down the research route and dive deep deeper into machine learning, cryptography, or computer vision. But let's face it, you studied computer science for life after university, which is watching other people get into FANG, spending all your time stressing out over not getting a job, while being the most overqualified burger flipper. Now if this video doesn't stop you from getting a CS degree, nor does the thousands of dollars of debt, and you genuinely enjoy programming and are fascinated by computing, good luck, you're on your own. Now, a word from our sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an app and website that makes it easy to learn fundamental concepts in math and science. Brilliant uses a goal-driven learning approach that is completely tailored for you. It's also designed for busy people. Lessons are concise and intuitive while packing great fundamental concepts. If I'm on the train and I want to do something productive, I can just open up Brilliant and have a quick lesson on astrophysics. Brilliant also offers multiple methods of reinforcement learning, such as quizzes, puzzles, and experiments. So these fundamental concepts get deeply ingrained. Don't believe me? You can get started with Brilliant for free for 30 days, and the first 200 people to sign up with my link get 20% off. That's brilliant.org slash bigboxsuite. Please check them out, and thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and thank you for your time. I am Big Box.